What's up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Ferno the Plug and I am here bringing you another Title Update 10 build or well I can't really say Title Update 10 so this is Title Update 10.1 now um, this is just an update for the Foundry Bulwark build I did a, a little while back uh, the Damage Foundry Bulwark build uh, for the Division uh, that one came out pretty well um, I found a couple pieces since then that kind of make it a little bit better but uh, since the nerf of the foundry board work uh, I've seen people been having a lot of trouble actually trying to fix that so I found a way where uh, this build can be very versatile for your group and for yourself um, you can get almost a hundred percent hazard protection without even putting it on your build because of the new booster hive now and uh, those are just some things that we're going to talk about uh, when going through this build video so uh, without further ado we're just gonna go ahead we're gonna jump straight in and uh, let's just talk about it so uh, first thing we're gonna talk about is going to be the specialization now if you're looking at my backpack you can see I'm not in firewall anymore now firewall was great back then because of the med kit uh, you already had the armor regen uh, the uh, health on kill, you know, you got the cluster grenade and the striker uh, shield was very great because it gave you that extra weapon damage as well as the armor break. So the uh, fury response when your armor broke, you put somebody on fire. Now, um, if you're not, if you're above average playing right now, most people have hazard protection. So um, the foam and dome isn't really working too much. That's going to be people that are just casual players at this point. So you got to keep that in mind as well. Uh, uh, just about every five people you play they're gonna have hazard protection um, well I, I say every ten people you play they're gonna have hazard protection but uh, out of the firewall uh, I am not using anymore um, technician is now the go-to for me when it comes to this build now I'm gonna tell you why and pretty much it's just because of amped this passive talent the plus one skill tier is beautiful uh, and the artificial hive as well uh, you're definitely gonna want to use that uh, once you make this build you'll be able to use it anywhere you can use it in the iron horse it will work perfectly for you you'll have you'll be able to get almost 100 percent hazard protection as well uh, when used correctly uh, you also get uh, extra damage to drones so anybody throwing turrets things like that mortars you can be able to burn those down a little bit easier you got an EMP grenade which is great as well uh, but the weapons I'm going to be using here is going to be the uh, rifle the assault rifle and then the SMG all right so now going into the build we're going to talk about the gadgets first now I am not using the striker shield anymore but I am using the crusader now you're getting the 50 percent health now with this build and I'll go over that too with the uh, with the three piece since they've nerfed that um, it, it's not bad so we're doing like we got like five million four hundred uh, 32,877 health on this. Now, beforehand, I think it would have been like maybe uh, 4,000,000 seven or maybe 4,000,000 five. It's not bad. You got a little extra health on there. And because you don't have that extra damage, the, the Lady Death will do that damage for you. You don't have to worry about that cone in front of you. Um, the biggest thing, though, is the, the buff that the Hive got for the booster. So you're going to get hazard protection. Now, it doesn't show in here, but you definitely get it. And the higher you go up in skill tier, the more you get. Now, um, as of right now, I'm getting 28.5% uh, buff amount. Uh, but with that being said, I also have mods here. So I have a 9.3% stem efficiency. I have health there and I have the stem charges just to get that 16. Now that's going to change eventually because I have two builds that I'm going to show you here, uh, which is going to work really well. Um, one of them is really can be really strong and one of them is going to be a little on the weaker side and I'm going to tell you why. Um, but uh, if you were to take this off, you'll see that that goes down 1.9%. It doesn't look like much, but uh, that 9.3% actually helps a lot. Uh, any any little bit that you can get towards hazard protection is going to make your build great, is what I'm going to say there. Now, um, like I was saying, you can, you can do a lot of things with this build now. It's very versatile with the pieces that I've chosen to use. So um, you don't even have to use the booster hive. If you wanted to, you can go in with a revive hive uh, if somebody else has a booster. Uh, you can even go in with a stinger hive, which is great too. And for PvP damage, you're hitting 84k. That's not bad. You'll actually hit higher. This build is not complete. You'll actually hit higher once you get the last piece that you need. I'm going to tell you about that as well. Um, healing is not really going to work for you there. Uh, 52 
thousand is not enough you need to be at least at 150k if you want to heal in pvp if it is not that high you are not going to do anything for yourself so just uh throw that away uh healing is not going to be a thing you're going to be using but the stinger hive the revive hive and the booster hive and then the artificial hive if you're going to go towards the iron horse raid you can definitely use this build as a tank all right so now going into the build i want to talk about the things that was nerfed on the foundry bulwark now we the two piece is still the same we got the 10 percent but the three piece has changed so uh we're getting one percent armor regeneration and then we're getting 50 percent health uh on the shield now that's not bad now it used to be three percent armor regeneration that's now gone it's now one percent what can we do i mean you just got to work with what you got uh makeshift repairs is still very strong when using a four piece so i got one with the four piece and one with the three piece that's going to be the second build i show you later now uh with the makeshift repairs whenever you or your shield takes damage you get 20 percent of that amount repaired over 15 seconds which is very great and that can make you very strong when it comes to a fight because at any time you can pull your shield up um I don't feel that anybody should play this build without a shield, but I mean, I've seen people do it. Um, the shield just makes it a lot easier if you can heal yourself while not taking damage. Uh, it might be different for PC players because, uh, you know, most of them are going to hit headshots regardless, but uh, it definitely helps out when playing on uh, PlayStation 4. I will say that. Now, um, the guns I'm using, uh, it's still the same. I haven't changed much on this. Uh, the guns are still the same. So I'm using the Lady Death. We got the core attributes, 15% SMG damage. We got 20.5% critical hit chance, lower attribute, 4% damage to armor. And then we got uh, the Talent Breathe Free. So you gain four stacks when moving, eight stacks when sprinting, and it stacks up to 32 times uh, each round fire consumes a stack amplifying damage by 75% and kills grant plus 20% movement speed for 10 seconds now uh, that is why this gun is so so great uh, it's still very powerful you don't even need a Sokolov piece to make this gun powerful uh, it, it just hits like a truck and everybody knows that um, I did try other guns I tried the Eagle Bearer with this uh, even with the 9% buff it, it's still not where it needs to be now anybody knows the old eagle bear you know when you got tenacity you got that weapon buff it was around like 35 percent um but the fact that they've made this a headshot gun it, it complicates things because i would much rather have damage to targets out of cover or damage to armor here uh so for me personally this gun is a no-go it's a no-go when using this build um you could definitely uh, tickle some people with this if you want to, but I can guarantee you most of the time you're going to lose that fight. Uh, the last gun that I use with this build is going to be the Ravenous. Now, uh, the Ravenous is a really great gun uh, because of its versatility when it comes to uh, playing this gun. When played right, you can have a lot of survivability as well as a lot of damage. So the talent for this, well, let me go over the core attributes. We got 14% rifle damage, 17,000 critical hit damage, then we got 10% damage to targets out of cover for the lower attribute. Uh, the talent is going to be Gary and Frankie uh, on trigger pull. Fire both barrels at once when fired from the right shoulder. Uh, hits at offensive primers and defensive primers when fired from the left shoulder. Hits from one shoulder would detonate all of the opposite shoulder's uh, primers when present. Okay, uh, When detonating, each offensive primer deals 100% weapon damage, while each defensive primer grants plus 4% bonus armor and plus 10% amplified damage to uh, armor plates for five seconds and then the primer's effectiveness is doubled at 10 stacks. Now I went into D the DZ uh, with this thing and it destroys um, I did have more damage I was playing with a damage build when I did that but uh, even if you're not going to use a damage build the offensive uh, side still wrecks people uh, especially when you get that stack it stacks up to 10 but you're hitting them twice you gotta remember that each bullet each trigger pull you're hitting them twice so for trying to stack up that 10 you only need to hit them five times with both of those and then switch shoulders and you're you're gonna do tons of damage it's gonna be blast damage now for the opposite side that amplified 10% uh, damage to armor plates is beautiful on top of being able to give yourself extra armor on top of that this thing will keep you alive in a fight and you don't even have to use a shield I will tell you that you can have the lowest armor in the world and you can stay alive with this gun if you know what you're doing alright so this is definitely uh, a go-to 
uh, if I'm not feeling like the Lady Death today, I will definitely go to the Ravenous. Now, um, going into the build, um, we got uh, we got the Foundry Mask. I was looking for this. Um, I'm not gonna talk about those other guns. They don't really matter. They're just uh, it's just a P416 and a, and a shotgun. But they're the same ones that was on my other video. I'll put a link to the uh, description down below if you guys want to check those out. But uh, the core attribute for my uh, Foundry Mask, we got 149,717 armor. Uh, I was telling you before in the old video, um, the lower attribute I was looking for was uh, critical hit damage. So I did find one, not exactly at 10%, but this was the best I found so far. So we got 9.5% critical hit damage there. And then I wanted to roll that mod slot from a blue to a red. So we got another additional 12% critical, uh, critical hit damage there. Goodness, I'm sorry. So um, with that being said, uh, I'm getting a lot of damage from that. Now the thing that's going to make this great again is going to be uh, the extra armor regen that you're going to get from the goal line gear. Now I have a two piece here, uh, but uh, it is not rolled exactly the way I want it. So uh, with the with the core attribute, I got 160,756 armor, and then we got the lower attribute, 11.6% critical hit damage. We got 15,002 health, which I would like to be hazard protection, and you're going to see why later. And then uh, for that, I went ahead and I rolled the mod slot to a red as well. Now, um, when you find this chest piece, you definitely want the critical hit damage and you want the hazard protection rolled on there already you're already gonna get that core attribute as a blue always so the thing that you want to switch off of this chest piece is always gonna be the mod slot now you might not find the perfect intimidate but a regular intimidate is just as good that five percent weapon damage is not gonna matter especially when you're using the lady death uh... definitely keep that in mind so for people that don't know what the perfect intimidate does uh... basically while you're within ten meters of an enemy and you have blue armor on you that's gonna be the over armor on top of the white uh, as long as you're within 10 meters you're gonna get 40 percent weapon damage so it's literally just five percent more than the regular all right now um, an alternative to this is actually um, this chest piece here we got the with the unbreakable uh, it gives you a little bit more survivability time to actually uh, use your armor regeneration and use that four piece so that you can get that armor back over to 15 uh, seconds but uh, this one just rolled wrong for me I ended up having to put that critical hit damage on there I had a yellow there uh, so I went ahead and rolled that off uh, and that critical hit chance is not needed I would rather have that hazard protection and I want that red mod slot so it always comes with a yellow you definitely want to take that yellow mod slot off of there now um, this one will give you a lot more survivability uh, you are gonna lose a little bit more damage um, the reason I played this one this way is because I am using the four piece and the makeshift repairs makes up for the time that I have to get to an enemy get up close to them uh, by that time I'm already regeneration uh, regenerating and then I got that two percent armor regeneration anyway so I'm not too afraid of the outcome is either I'm gonna punish this person or he's gonna punish me and then I can move away and heal up or let one of my squad members come in and take care of the rest uh, wh whatever way you want to do that there so um, we're gonna talk about the backpack next because uh, just so you know you do need the two-piece go line to get that extra armor regen this is gonna be your survivability uh, on top of the four-piece with the makeshift repairs so we got the uh, core attributes gonna be 129,727 armor uh, we got the lower attribute at 4.7% critical hit chance, and then I went ahead and I rolled that critical hit damage there. Now, for the critical hit chance, like I said, again, I would rather have hazard protection there. You want to get that as high as possible so people can't foam you anymore, and that booster hive is definitely going to make it possible. Uh, also, you want to find it with the hazard protection and the critical hit damage on there already so that you can roll that yellow mod slot off of there. You do not want that on your build. You want a red there so that you can still have around 100 twenty percent critical hit damage when it comes down to it that lady death is gonna crit anyway it's already got enough for it all right and then uh, the talent I'm using here is gonna be the adrenaline rush so whenever you are within 10 meters of an enemy you gain 20 percent bonus armor for five seconds and it stacks up three times it's got a cooldown of five seconds
all right and for the two-piece like I said uh, this is why it's so versatile too for the stinger hive and things like that so you got the status effect and then you get another 1% armor regeneration so if you went with that stinger hive it's gonna bleed a little bit longer for you so that you can chase that enemy down and we got a lot of runners out here if you guys play in the DZ as much as I do trust me people run even me we got a lot of runners out here now uh, for the for the holster we got the foundry bulwark. I did just find this. This was an upgrade as well. So core attribute is going to be a blue. We got 144,738 armor. And then the lower attribute is going to be 10% hazard protection. Uh, for the knee pads, we're going to have the core attribute at a 149,484 armor on a blue. And then we have the lower attribute 10% hazard protection. Uh, now me personally, I, you need to, I feel like you need to have at least one red on your build. Because if I didn't, I'd be at like 57,000 on my Lady Death. Uh, when you go into the DZ, you lose 20% of your weapon damage. So you need to have at least one of those on there. Now, the way I have this set up now, I'm missing a yellow. Alright, so now, me personally, uh, I would pick between your glove and your knee pads. But uh, we're just going to talk about the, the gloves first. So we got the core attribute 15% weapon damage. And then I got that lower attribute at 10.3% critical hit damage. Now, that's supposed to be hazard protection on that lower attribute. Uh, and I would much rather put a yellow either on this glove or on the knee pads like I was saying previous. Reason being, you need that 2% uh, skill, uh, skill tier so that this booster hive does what it's supposed to do. Now, if I get that second skill tier, which I'm going to show you guys later after I show you that second build, you're going to see how high my uh, my hazard protection actually jumps when with just those two skill tier. Now, with that being said, this build right here uh, is definitely stronger than the other build just because of the makeshift repairs. Just because of the makeshift repairs. Nothing else. I'm going to definitely say that. Now, the other one you can run around a lot more with. Uh, you do have a little bit more armor regeneration on there, um, but this this one is the strongest build, especially when going into PvP or uh, going into the Iron Horse raid. This one will be your strongest build. Uh, if you're going to go into the Iron Horse, though, I will find this exact same chest piece. And if you're if you're tanking, of course, you just want to put Vanguard or you want to use this Tartar grade here. You know what I'm saying? So that you can actually help your team out. Uh, Vanguard is preferred. So definitely use Vanguard if you don't know what Vanguard does. Let me see if I got one on here, actually. I should have a Vanguard. Yeah. So Vanguard, uh, deploying a shield makes it invulnerable for five seconds, and it grants 45% of your armor as bonus armor to all your allies for 20 seconds. The cooldown is 25 seconds. Now, this is great because it doesn't matter where they are on the map. You can just pop that shield. Everybody's going to get 45% of your armor. All right? If you're going into the raid, Vanguard over the Tardigrade. If you're gonna go Tardigrade, be like an off tank or something like that, it'll still be perfect for your group, but you do not want an actual tank that's sitting in front of all of the damage with his shield to have that Tardigrade on. I'm gonna let you know that right now. Um, so the second build that we're gonna talk about is going to be a quick switch right here so this one um is actually close to where I needed to be it has the two skill tier already and it has the weapon damage now for this one I would much rather have the hazard protection there as well that's the only thing I'm gonna say there for that glove that glove is exactly the same as it was on the other one all right so uh, you don't you do want the the weapon damage there but you want hazard protection for that lower attribute the mask is the same here I showed you guys the chest piece I just want the hazard protection removed there. The critical hit damage is fine. And then you want that red mod slot. Uh, I went ahead and kept the backpack because uh, you know these guys are running up to you with this Lady Death. Uh, they're going to be in your face. So it made sense to keep a little bit more um, survivability on me. So I get that armor for however many people are rushing me. Um, the only difference now is because of the more common knee pads that I have here. So for this, you're going to get get the core attribute. It's going to be a skill tier. I went ahead and left that there. You get 1% more armor regeneration, and then you got the hazard protection there. So um, this is like, uh, this is kind of the bread and butter. It's kind of like it was before. Uh, more people were using it before, though, because they were running 5% armor regeneration. Uh, this one is still strong. But like I said, you got to be careful with this one. Now, um, most of these pieces are the same, like I said. Just just the knee pads are different. Um, it is decent, but uh, I, I've seen myself die a lot more using this one. 
Um, Lady Death's still the same. The gun is still the same. P416, G3 was strained, and then uh, the uh, backup boom stick. I got a new one actually. I was using this one before with the Ranger. I found one with Killer on it. So we got 16% shotgun damage, 12% damage to armor. 7% uh, critical hit damage and then killer on there. Um, this one is, I feel like it's better because if I actually do get a crit when I kill him, the next person is going to go down pretty quick if I uh, keep this gun in my hand. But um, overall, it, they're, they're both kind of like the same. You're just losing one. And uh, like I said, the makeshift repairs is a lot stronger because you're getting those repairs when somebody shoots you. And that's you personally or your shield. Now, um, we're going to run over to the... Uh, gonna run over to the uh, firing range real quick alright ladies and gentlemen now that we made it to the firing range let's go ahead and check out this booster hive but uh, before doing that I'm gonna go over a couple things here now like I was saying before uh, with the chest piece and the backpack I would rather have hazard protection there and on the backpack I would rather have hazard protection um, for that critical hit chance I'm gonna go back to that chest because I didn't really say anything there and I would rather have health uh, hazard protection over that health right there so in general if I was to do that I'd have that's 10 percent on the chest 40 percent uh, 20 percent on the uh, backpack we'd have 30 percent on the gloves 40 percent on the knee pads 50 percent on the holster right and then if you look into your paragon if you have your paragon max or if you just went for your hazard protection you got 10 there so that's 60 percent that's 60 percent right there now the thing I'm going to look at here is uh, I'm going to swap this glove out because we're not looking at the damage right now. Um, you definitely do want to keep that red on there because like I said you're going to go down and then you're going to lose 20% once you go into the dark zone. You do not want to be hitting that 57.9k. Uh, you definitely want to be hitting a little bit above that. So that 15% might put you exactly where you need to be. You might be at that 57.9. You might be a little bit higher. I'm not 100%. I did not calculate that, but um, it'll definitely be better than being at, uh, what, 54 point something. It's definitely better. You want that little bit of extra damage there, especially when going with something tankier. Now, um, I went ahead and I switched that glove out for the damage, just for the hazard protection. And then I'm going to show you what that second skill tier does. So I'm just going to put on a random backpack. This one still has no hazard protection. Uh, it's only giving me the skill tier, so the only thing it's going to affect is my shield and my booster hive. Now, uh, things that some people uh, don't know, or maybe everybody knows, uh, skill tier also goes toward uh, your shield. Now, blues go toward your shield as well. You can have six blues, and you'll still come out with that 5,432,000. Uh, you can even go with a full six skill tier. You're still going to come out with that same shield uh, health. All right? So always remember that. It's not going to change regardless. Uh, the only thing that changes is the armor that's going to be on your character. So uh, if you were to go like, um, say, three blues, three yellows, you'd have like 1.3 million health uh, or armor, if you want to say that. And then um, your shield health would still be the same. It's just, it's just however you want to play. Um, me, I want more survivability. I like that 1.5 range, 1.7, uh, that type of thing. So... I definitely would go towards that. Now, um, we're just going to go ahead. We're going to drop this hive here. Uh, well, first off, let me go ahead and show you what I'm working with now. It should be at 40%, and it is. Now, we're going to go ahead and drop the hive, and hopefully this does not glitch on me. We're going to go back in, and we're going to check and see where we at. So, it did glitch. i got to switch a couple times. Let me switch that build up. Go back to it. Where you at? There you are. Alright, let's go back. We're gonna drop it again. Nope. I forgot. I gotta put that stuff back on. No, don't I? So we got the uh, hazard protection and we got that weak backpack that I was just using. Right, let's go ahead and drop that booster. And now we are at 75.1. Alright. So remember that's without the chest piece having the hazard, that's without the backpack having the hazard. So if we at 95, you know you ain't being stuck by nothing, you ain't being bleed by nothing, you ain't being shocked by nothing, you know, ain't nobody blinding you, none of that. Uh, most people don't run jammers either, so you, you really don't have to worry about it too much because they, people feel like the jammer is a sacrifice, but it's really not. It's, it's the strongest gadget on this game, if you think about it, for not doing damage. 
it's the strongest gadget you can have on this game I can kill a mortar with one shot I can stop you from damaging me with any type of foam anything like that depending on how much hazard protection the next man has so those are things that you have to think about when it comes down to that now when it comes to pros and cons like I said, uh, the four piece is going to be stronger even without that extra 1% armor regeneration because of the makeshift repairs. You're getting 20% of your armor back if you're getting shot by your uh, in your shield or you're getting shot in your body. That that is just going to turn you into a god. Now, uh, on the on the other hand, when it comes to a person that actually knows what a jammer can do, that's going to be the difference between this build going down. Yes, you have 3% armor regeneration, but you don't have makeshift repairs. So the only thing that you have to protect yourself is your shield. And how well can you move? Now, um, the difference between this one is going to be crazy. Because like I said, you're not using the foam, but you can have somebody in your group using the foam. Uh, so that could work out for you well. You can still foam and dome as long as you got somebody rocking that for you. Uh, this one is built more around the lines for support. So you can get in and out. This is still a running build if you need to. Uh, it's also a damage build if you need be um, so keep keep that in mind but this one is the weaker one because you're not getting that extra 20 percent uh, weapon or not not weapon damage but you're not getting that 20 percent repairs over 15 seconds when somebody shoots you which means uh, this one can be burned pretty quick and if somebody does utilize that jammer like I was saying before most people don't um, they, they will be able to foam you and they will be able to kill you fast um, that armor regeneration is great but you you gotta remember you're still on the lower side of armor uh... that's the reason that we put that unbreakable on there so that you could counter that foaming dome if they do use that jammer so that's gonna be the thing for this build uh... we also kept the adrenaline rush on here so that you have a little bit more when they decide to run up to you because most people with that lady death they're not gonna shoot you from a distance unless your back is turned so keep that in your mind as well um, this one is strong for running um, you can stay up you can definitely do the damage um, like I said you just gotta have somebody else run that phone for you because this one is more around the line support uh, if you're not trying to go support and you want somebody else to rock the same build maybe you could go out with like two or three of these guys and they could be wearing the same thing um, you can go with a reviver hive or a stinger just to slow some people down and as you can see the damage went up a little bit higher just from that skill tier that's the two skill tier there so it's now at ninety eight thousand one hundred and nine all right uh... for the other one like i said this one is stronger you got the makeshift repairs you also you got always getting armor back this is what makes this one so powerful and it gives you the chance to actually use intimidate uh... because you're getting that armor back over time so you have more chances to actually jump into a fight and get out of a fight uh, when it comes down to it uh, and then the biggest thing with the booster hive that I like the refill speed is 0 0.9 seconds uh, so you know that thing's coming back really fast even if somebody blows it up you can just toss it back down so don't do not be afraid to use that uh, so I think that's gonna um, close down the video man uh, I hope you guys liked it um, don't forget to comment if you need some extra help or if you feel like you might want to do something else or you think you did something wrong. Um, Ferno the plug. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.